I'm going to share a couple of slides um, to, for our discussion today. Um, so thank you so much to Cakes Care and PTA as well for inviting me to be part um, of this panel. It's quite a privilege to be um, here with so many parents and families and professionals. I um, really appreciate that. Um, so in my role as a clinical psychologist in the psychiatry department at Sick Kids, I have um, very I have an opportunity to provide a lot of assessment and treatment for children and adolescents with anxiety and mood disorders, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, emotion dysregulation, um, somatic symptom disorders, and certainly working in the past couple of years with youth and their families, um, I have witnessed a lot of the this very significant difficulties around mental health um, during the pandemic. And so um, I hope to share some insights around that with you today. Um, so as Sharon alluded to, we know that routine, structure, um, consistency in day-to-day -day lives are incredibly protective for mental health. And so the significant disruption um, that our youth have experienced during this uh, pandemic in their daily lives due to lockdowns, due to restrictions has clearly had a very significant impact on things such as physical activity, sleep, as Sharon was just talking about, social interactions, and of course, mental health. Um, so what do we know? What does the research show us about children and adolescent mental health during the pandemic at this time? Um, so research from a COVID and mental health study that's led by four research teams in Ontario. So um, the Sick Kids, Child and Youth Outpatient Psychiatry Program, Target Kids, Spit for Science, and the Province of Ontario Neurodevelopmental Disorders Network, uh, with Dr. Daphne Korchak as the um, primary investigator, has really highlighted some striking findings. So more than 70% of children and adolescents between ages of 6 and 18 have reported worsening mental health. And almost two-thirds of younger children between ages 2 and 5 are also reporting, reporting worsening mental health. I'm just going to share um, a video clip quickly, um, just to uh, to loop, to show some of those findings. It's a silent clip, so I'll just read it out loud so that everyone has the opportunity to hear it. So, new preliminary findings from our COVID nineteen mental health study. So, the COVID nineteen pandemic has been a series of waves. Yet heightened depression and anxiety among children and youth have stayed consistent. Vulnerable families had greater economic hardship as a result of the pandemic. These families experienced higher level of caregiver and child mental health symptoms and stress. Caregiver mental health and family functioning was also impacted by children's mental health difficulties. Loss of in-school services resulted in worse mental health outcomes for kids. More time spent online learning was associated with increased depression and anxiety. More time watching TV on digital media and video gaming was associated with more hyperactivity and attention, irritability, depression, and anxiety for all children and youth. Before COVID-19, 58% of children and youth participated in school sports or extracurriculars. During COVID-19, only 27% participated in sports and 16% in extracurriculars. About 50% of children and youth found the change to sports and activities hard or very hard. So the data shows that kids and youth need safe in-person as well as recreational, physical, and social activities. So really just wanting to highlight um, some of the real challenges um, that we are seeing firsthand with our children and adolescents right now. Um, additional findings from the COVID-19 mental health study um, have found that the screen use has been much higher um, than the recommended one to two hours a day. And those recommendations come from the American Academy of Pediatrics and Canadian Pediatric Society. Um, we also had been finding children with more screen use were reported to have worse mental health um, outcomes. So in young children, higher TV or digital media use was associated with more conduct problems, more hyperactivity, more inattention. For children in the school age 6 to 18 years, higher TV viewing or digital media was associated with more symptoms of depression, anxiety, irritability, and inattention. And finally, higher video game use 
was associated with more depression, anxiety, conduct problems, and inattention and hyperactivity. So what can we do to help given the number of, of youth in need right now? So putting on your oxygen mask first. So I know masks is a, is a big topic these days. So I still come back to the oxygen mask analogy. Um, and so this works for parents, for caregivers, and also for healthcare providers. You know, taking care of our own mental health and well-being during uncertain and prolonged difficult times is quite a powerful tool um, in supporting our children. So it models to them how we can express and cope with difficult feelings. Taking time for basics, so thinking about nutrition, um, sleep routines, exercise and fresh air for yourselves. Paying attention to your own stress, um, noticing when you're starting to feel overwhelmed and taking a break. Taking a few deep, slow, deep breaths when you start to feel anxious or upset. Being compassionate with yourself. So as we've heard from numerous speakers today, parents and caregivers, you are doing the best you can right now. Focusing on things that are in your control. We know there are so many things out of your control these days, so many things that are uncertain. So focusing on the few things that are in your control helps to model to our kids positive ways of coping with stress. Communicating with youth in a clear, calm and consistent manner that validates all emotions and all experiences that they're going through are fine and normal and acceptable right now. And finally, I've listed a resource at the bottom um, that can be found on the About Kids Health website, so Parenting During COVID-19 and Beyond podcast. Ways that we can support our youth with this pandemic fatigue as the waves carry on. So listening and validating to their concerns. So for example, you've made it through tough times before and I know you can do this again. Encouraging healthy anxiety tools. So relaxation strategies, using realistic thinking and reframing some of our negative thoughts. Encouraging healthy daily activities, movement breaks, connecting with peers, um, building healthy sleep routines, Taking a social media break, so having some screen free times and engaging in safe in-person activities. And finally, considering encouraging them to learn a new skill. So if you can think of a hobby that they may have wanted to get into before, maybe something that you can do as a family. Um, and finally, out of the COVID-19 mental health study, there's been some screen time recommendations um, that I just wanted to highlight. So adopting some screen free play time with young kids when you're interacting or playing with them monitoring your own personal screen use in front of children, prioritizing some screen free time, so including meals or at bedtime, incorporating movement while using screens, so for example, exer gaming, uh, standing while using handheld devices, or engaging in online workouts. And finally, promoting healthy screen use where you can emphasize screen use for social interaction, online education, and new skills. Um, and finally, some additional resources that may be useful to families. So a couple of websites, the Anxiety Canada, Healthy Mental Health, and About Kids Health websites. Um, in the Toronto area, there are some walk-in clinics um, and access points. And then there's a free online CBT um, program available to you 16 and up. Um, and finally, I just wanted to highlight that, um, you know, if you are, you know, significantly concerned about a youth's mental health, to start with a family doctor or pediatrician for referrals to mental health professionals.